There's no indicator light on the 300SL dashboard for when to change your ignition parts. And the maintenance booklet only shows a service for replacing spark plugs every 30,000 miles. With well over 100,000 miles on the clock, I decided to replace the rotor, the distributor cap, all the spark plug wires, and to put six brand new spark plugs in my M104 engine. These M104 six-cylinder engines from the early 1990s still have a distributor cap. These posts send high voltage electricity from the coil to each spark plug using a rotor to distribute it. The rotor has a metal contact on the edge that receives voltage from the center pivot point as it spins inside the cap. Driven off the front of the engine, the metal edge lines up with the inside of the posts on the cap, but does not touch them. Across this small air gap jumps a spark thousands of times a minute, and that is what finally wears out the cap. I am using all original brand Bosch parts that I bought myself without any discount or other consideration. These plus four platinum plugs have four electrodes reducing the chance of misfires and I'm attaching them to the Bosch silicon ignition wires with composite ends. The cap and rotor are behind this plastic cover at the top front of the engine. The spark plug wires run in the center valley between the two camshaft housings and are kept in place by this plastic cover and five Phillips head screws. I'm loosening each screw first and then I'm going back to lift the cover up gently out of the way. The spark plug wires are now easy to get at, but there is a restricted space up front between the engine and the radiator shroud. Be careful working in such a tight space. The next thing I'll remove are the three 5mm Allen head cap screws that are holding the distributor cap in place. I can then gently lift the cap up. Now I'm keeping the six spark plug wires still attached. This will allow me to use them as a reference later when I plug the new wires. The center wire to the cap is held behind a plastic bracket, so I will unplug that in order to move the cap up out of the way. A closer look at the inside of the cap shows just what we suspected. The inner posts are pitted and slightly burnt from years of high voltage sparking across them. With the rotor now exposed, I can remove the three 3mm Allen head screws holding it to its drive mounting post. The space is a little tight here and the three screws are all captive to the rotor. A quick comparison between the new rotor on the left and the old rotor on the right shows the same kind of pitting and rough edge that the cap electrodes had. There is also a small amount of carbonized dust trapped in the cap area which can easily be wiped out. The high speeds that the rotor spins at calls for some blue thread locker on each of these cap screws. We don't need any of these coming loose. The backing of the rotor is asymmetrical, so just turn it while pushing it on the mount and it will drop right into place. Spin each screw in finger tight before going back around for the final firm tightening with the tools. Just below the distributor, a molded plastic bracket holds the center coil wire safely out of the way. I'm going to remove all four 10 mm bolts and lift the bracket up out of the way freeing up the coil wire. It's a little grimy with dirt and oil, so after you get it out, you'll probably want to wipe it down a little bit. The coil wire snakes its way across the front of the engine, over the belt tensioner, under the radiator hose, past the power steering reservoir, and under the air intake hose, and finally to the ignition coil.
This is the first wire out of the whole set that I'll replace with a new one. And back it goes across the front of the engine, and I will hold it in place loosely by suspending it through this tie wrap by the thermostat housing. I'm not tightening the loop all the way down so the wire has some slack to move, I don't want it to short out against the metal of the engine, and I make sure to snip off any extra tie wrap. With the coil cable rooted back across the front of the engine, back into the plastic bracket it goes, leaving enough slack so that it reaches the distributor cap. These bracket bolts can be hard to get at, so get them all started first by hand before going around to tighten them up again. Now to install the new cap. It is keyed with a notch at the back that matches up on the engine, so there's really only one way that it will fit on. As usual, I recommend that you get each screw started just a little bit before working your way around with the tool to tighten the rest of them up. It is such a tight area to work in, you may find that ratcheting tools can really help speed things up. Let's get the center coil wire plugged, and then it's time to get the old spark plugs out, and then we can organize plugging of the new set of wires. These wires have been in place for a very long time, and the metal end may make pulling them off a little hard. I found that some of the wires pulled off the spark plugs with very little effort, but several were a little more recalcitrant and needed some coaxing from a pair of pliers. Down each of these wells in the head is an old spark plug ready to come out. Because this head is aluminum, it's going to require special care in spark plug removal. Gently loosen the plug just a half turn or so, then tighten it back up, and do this a few times going back and forth, each time going a little further to start to pull it out. With the plug loosened about a half turn, you can even apply your favorite penetrating oil and let it soak in. Just take your time. Do not force the spark plugs out. Once the spark plugs are loose, you can use a piece of fuel line to remove the old spark plug from its well. Push the line down on the plug, and then, twisting it, you can just fish it straight out. The plug on the right has been in for about 60,000 miles, and we can see that it has some deposits built up on it. You can get the new plug started in their wells using that same fuel line trick. Just push it on the end, push it down, and give it a spin. You still have to be careful not to cross-thread them, but just turn the plugs until the hose starts to slip. Once the plug has been wrenched down snug, a quarter turn is plenty for final tightness. Repeat this process for each of the six spark plugs. Be careful and take your time. The hazard to avoid here is stripping or cross-threading the head. That would be a very expensive repair. Let's look at the old cap and wires. Notice how the wires are interlaced over and under each other. We are going to try to duplicate that as we plug the new set. Basically, we want the pattern that's up here to match on the cap down there. Consult the old cap as a guide to plug each wire to its post and plug and how to lace it as it goes on the cap. You'll notice the cap has cylinder numbers stamped by each post, and the wire length really dictates which cylinder it can reach, for reference. With the whole wire set now plugged on both ends, straighten and dress the wires down the center of the head, using the black spreader clip to neaten them up. Carefully tuck everything under the center cover without forcing or pinching any wires. Five Phillips head screws later, 
and a snap-on plastic end cover, and you are all set. All set to head out for another beautiful day under the open top skies with your R129 Mercedes-Benz 300 SL. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And here are some other videos that you might find interesting. And if you did enjoy this, uh, be sure to click on the subscribe button.